Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this uh, speed art kind of video that I'm doing now, I guess. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to kind of show a little project that I decided to work on out on a whim and uh, just kind of go over what I'm doing and uh, how I did it and the, you can see like the whole transformation. So what I'm doing right here is I took a poly world card just an image of it off the internet and I'm using Photoshop to make it into a full art card, just kind of redesigning the card. I thought it would be a fun project to do, so what I'm doing here is just using the clone stamp tool, which I'm not the best at using, uh, but I'm definitely trying to get better at it, which is why I do projects like these every once in a while. I don't usually go into projects with any kind of set idea in mind, I just start going at it like this, just clone stamping. Uh, to get a background uh, For this particular case. I just decided to expand the background to the full card and then I'd go from there uh, So this one this particular card was a good one for clone stamping because it, it was already so messy uh, So if I mess it up, it just kind of looks normal uh, So it's always good to kind of judge what you're gonna have to do for each each project uh, as you can see I'm just taking the same little bit and expanding it over the whole card. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, it doesn't take uh, too much effort to do. This whole video you're seeing is, I think, 47 minutes of work sped up. So not too, too much. Uh, under an hour of work. Um, and I thought that I think the results were pretty good. So yeah, just, just here just clone stamping everything out. Uh, to get a nice coherent background. I uh, After this, you'll start seeing that I bring in some more elements to the card, but just for now, just focusing on that clone stamp. Uh, if I could give any tips on doing this, it would, it would just be kind of... Oh, I just mimic the, the card and kind of try and repeat the edges. Um, so as you can see, this doesn't look, this bottom part doesn't look the greatest. Uh, so I just decided to bring in some rocks, and then I would cover up the part that I didn't like as much. Because I thought that the top looked fine, but, um, yeah, the bottom I just wanted to cover up, so I just covered up the bottom with some rocks. And, uh, then from there I brought in some sand, and, yeah, just bringing it in. I decided to go for a beach theme. Uh, you just kind of have to feel it out. I, w I would say there's no there's no set way to kind of do this. So what I'm doing is just taking these stock images and, and putting them in. Uh, and uh, right now it just looks pretty rough because it's just getting an idea. So I, I always just go for an idea first. Um, I would like to maybe stream this process because I think I could go over it in a bit more detail than just trying to keep up with the sped up footage that I'm putting out here. Um, what I'm doing is just copying and pasting um, the starfish and, and the shells and all that and resizing them so they look a little, a little bit more natural. Um, and then I'm going to blend them in after. Um, as you can see my layers are a bit messy. Uh, usually people will um, usually people will like name their layers. I don't name my layers, especially not now with the new Photoshop. Uh, just being able to click and it'll take you to the, take you to the layer. Um, so I'm sorry if someone watching this is like an avid Photoshop user and they're like, this is gross. Uh, so what I did here is I made that whole bottom, the rocks and the sand and all that into a smart object so I can start clone stamping and kind of blending it all in so it looks more like the sand is, is on the rocks and covering some of the shells there. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Just uh, trying to blend it in. Now I'm blending the water in with the rocks a little bit too, just to give it more of a rugged edge. And now it looks like a coherent thing. Now I'm just cheating a little bit. This is pretty much just cheating. I'm just putting a filter over it all, so it looks uh, so it just looks like a one solid image, kind of. Like I'm I'm trying to blend all the elements as best as possible. I said it on this one, I think. Yeah. This one I settled on. 
Uh, so now just for kind of, I was going to just end it there, but I decided I wanted to make it more of a, like a card. So what I'm doing is just taking all the, the layers that I want, so all the move names and everything like that. And I was like, yeah, I'll just blend these in. Uh, this part was just kind of half haphazardly, like, uh, so you'll see that I changed my mind halfway through about how I'm going about it. Originally, I was going to, like, basically magic wand select all these so I could keep the font, and then I could have, like, a higher res font, basically. But that didn't end up working out too well, so I ended up scrapping that whole idea in a bit. So you can just see, kind of, that nothing is perfect. Um, it's all trial and error. And, uh, yeah. Now I'm just trying to recreate the card as best as possible in my own style. So I'm putting this pre-evolution there. So putting the polywag up in the corner. I'm just putting the water energy over there. And I actually use the water energy for a little surface around a certain, like a backdrop for for Polyworld here. So I'm just trying to blend it in. Yep, looks pretty good, so I just went with that. Then doing that, it actually gave me the idea to do what I'm doing here, which is to make these, these borders basically. So I'm combining just a rectangle and some circles to make like a, a rounded edge uh, kind of nameplate. So I'm just uh, making those into smart objects, and then I just resize them to fit what I need them to do. Just copy them over. Now I'm just using it because I'm going to use a different font, I decided. This is where my layers kind of mess me up a little bit. You can see that I have to kind of find where my text layers go. And then now I'm just using the card as reference for how it's all laid out. And you'll see I don't even stick to this particular idea. I do keep the... So these borders here, I decided they kind of obstructed the uh, obstructed the view of the image too much, and I didn't want that. I want it to be more of a full art kind of look. So you'll see in a second here that I just completely abandoned this whole idea. And I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> so there, that's pretty much. I thought like that looks pretty good. That looks all right, but. Um, I felt like it would be better if there was just a little something else to it. So I think here's where I decided to. Yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm adding a stroke. And then I'm... So there, there's a stroke, and then since it's a smart object, I can just select it, rasterize it, and then I can uh, take it out, and now it's just a, a circle or just an outline of the of the nameplate, which allows you to see more of the background, which I liked a lot more. So now I'm just taking the energy to make the... the damage costs, or energy costs for the moves. This one was being dumb, so I just... <laughs> kind of rough traced it with the magnetic lasso there. Didn't have to be perfect. Now I'm just adjusting everything. It's all trial and error as you can see. So now I'm just adding strokes, taking the background out. And then I think I finish it off at the end here by just adding a nice um, drop shadow to all the text. 
and then uh, that's pretty much the card. Uh, I might stream this. I feel like streaming this process would be fun. Um, I just thought I'd make a little art video because I do this stuff all the time, so I might as well make content out of it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this kind of more relaxed video. And uh, here, I'll uh, let you enjoy the comparison here. <laughs>